Ja, herzlich willkommen alle miteinander. Wir sind hier in Berlin gerade auf dem Linux-Tag und äh, ich freue mich ganz besonders, dass wir Jan Murdoch äh, hier haben und ich möchte die nächsten paar Minuten nutzen, um mit Jan äh, hier uns zu unterhalten über die Rolle. Jan, it's a pleasure for us to have you here at Linux Tage in Berlin. You will be keynoting tomorrow. What we do here is a short recording for our uh, YouTube channel that we present uh, in Germany. And I would ask to tell us a little bit, what is your current role actually at Sun? So I run the developer and community marketing organization, which includes marketing of the developer tools, the developer programs like Sun Developer Network, uh, open source communities, and I also um, run the network.com marketing as well. Jan, your name is very closely related with Debian. Uh, so what's the difference between your role you had in the Debian project, so from .org to .com at Sun? What, what, what are your impressions after, how long are you now with Sun? About a year, yes. So, so actually, there, there's a there's a third progression in there. So there was .org to um, to startup to to Sun, and, and I often uh, joke that that Sun's the first company I've worked for uh, larger than 40 people that I haven't started. So it, it is a little bit different um, in many ways. In, in other ways, it's very similar. I mean, there's a lot of uh, very passionate people at Sun. In, in many ways, it, it feels like a startup. Um, in, in many ways, managing an open source community is, is harder than managing, uh, managing people who work for you because you have to motivate them in different ways. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's engineers building interesting technology and, and it's, it's very similar in that uh, particular respect. So you, you, you think Sun still is really a, a technical and engineering company? Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Jan, um, it was Mark Andreessen who said, I think it's two years or three years ago, uh, Solaris is a better Linux than Linux. We are here at the Linux days. W would you comment on that statement? So actually, when, um, when we first started talking about uh, uh, Project Indiana, which eventually became Open Solaris, which we released uh, just a month or so ago, I actually used that quote quite frequently. That, and and I, I tended to amend it a little bit that, that Solaris could be a better Linux than Linux. And the, the, main, the main rationale is when you think about Linux, Linux, is, uh, Linux proper is just the operating system kernel. But what most people refer to when they refer to Linux is actually this larger collection of open source technology that the Linux distributions have aggregated around the Linux kernel. Right, so to essentially be a better Linux than Linux in that sense, um, what we've done is we have combined the, uh, the uh, amazing innovation and technology that has been in Solaris for a few decades now uh, with the open source technology that the market has come to refer to as Linux. Um, and you know, what I like to think is not so much better Linux than Linux, but, but best of both worlds, the, the best of Solaris technology with, with the best of the open source community technology. Um, I think we are really winning back the hearts of the developer community here. Uh, we are sitting in the middle of them and I would like to ask you a question on our Sun installed base for the commercial market. Do you think we are ready also to offer our really big investments in open source uh, and have a monetization model ready for our company? Yeah, so I think you know a lot of, uh, certainly one of the questions that I've been asked uh, since the beginning is how do you make money from free software? How do you make money from open source? And you know, basically, what, what we have um, what, what we have done at Sun, I think, better than any other vendor, is articulated uh, exactly how we intend to do that and how we are doing that. And you know, the basic observation is, you can think about um, uh, essentially a technology in a couple of different pieces. There's the the core platform piece uh, that developers build applications around, and that uh, is sort of the, the the core offering that developers and users can deploy and put into production. And then there's a set of edge technologies built around that core platform, whether in, in the case of, of an operating system, it's packages. In the case of some other technologies, it's uh, plugins or extensions, I mean, whatever the case may be. Uh, and so, you know, our open source strategy is essentially we have a, a set of, of free and open source core platforms like OpenSolaris and MySQL and, and XVM and so forth 
uh, which are offered entirely free to the developer community. It enables us to build uh, what you know, Jonathan Schwartz has referred to as volume drives value. So we build volume in the developer community. And then we make our money by offering uh, value added uh, services, support, subscriptions, and, and so forth around those free and open source core platforms which essentially help the developers who have adopted those core platforms to, uh, to, to monetize them, to, to scale them, to take them into production. Um, and it's a, model that, it, it's a model that works, it's a model that, that has uh, worked very well for MySQL, it's a model that uh, has worked very well for, uh, for other open source technologies, and we're applying it uh, at a scale that it's never been applied before. So I think that's uh, a huge benefit uh, to uh, the industry and to the open source community. Okay, thank you for that thought. Uh, for, at the end, I would ask you ask you a question. Uh, your name and uh, Debian, uh, the, the mechanism of the advanced package tool up get, I think is key. The key technology now for Open Solaris is the image packaging system. Could you give uh, a short explanation? Is it the same or what's the difference between those uh, two implementations? So it's based on the same set of concepts, namely that you should be able to install software over the network. Uh, you should be able to install. Um, you, you should be able to install software with a single command and have uh, the, the the package system figure out the interdependencies and the other software that you need in order to run the software that you want to install. That's uh, based on the concept of being able to upgrade your system uh, in real time. Uh, where it differs is, and, and certainly as we looked at adding a package system into Open Solaris, we looked at apt, we looked at some of the other Linux package systems. Um, but fundamentally, there are some uh, different technologies in Solaris that the package system needs to be um, intricately aware of. So, uh, for example, in, in Solaris, we have the notion of a patch, which is different from a package, and, and retrofitting that notion into existing package system was turning out to be rather difficult. Uh, we have technologies like containers, so basically, uh, uh, application environments that are separate from each other, but we allow uh, those application environments to share the file system to a certain degree. So again, the package system really needs to know about that. And finally, you know, we we saw opportunities for for additional innovation, um, the ability to easily customize the system to build derivative versions. So we, you know, creating a new package system was obviously a long and thoughtful process, but one uh, which ultimately made the most sense given the goals that we wanted to accomplish with it. Did you ever uh, author or write an article at Wikipedia or modify one? <laughs> uh, I, th I think I, I changed the picture in my Wikipedia article because I didn't like it, but I think that's the extent of my Wikipedia contribution. So I, I have a wish for you. I, I looked up at the, the German Wikipedia for IPS, uh, the image packaging system, and I found uh, Edie Patrick, Parkinson's syndrome, Indianapolis Public School, interactive power supply, but not yet image packaging system. Uh, I think you should add this to the list. Okay, so I, I need to brush on, up on my German before I do that. Well, uh, but I heard that uh, you speak a little bit of German. Uh, ein bisschen, yes. Ein bisschen. Ein bisschen. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jan.